good morning. Thank you for having me. Um, and thank you guys for coming through um, in this wonderful weather. Okay. Um, basically, I'm gonna I'm going to um, talk about what you need um, for your studio if you wanna be a music producer. Okay, um, how many producers do we have here today? Yeah. <laughs> okay, um, how many of you guys know what you need? Yeah, in terms of gear, sorry. <laughs> yeah, in terms of gear. So I'm going to, to talk about gear, and then I'm going to talk about what do you need, how do you set up your gear, and then how do you use your gear. Okay, um, this is your basic, your basic studio um, setup gear. So you have monitors, obviously you have two monitors, left and right, obviously, and then you have your uh, sound card, and then you have your computer, and then you have your MIDI keyboard, and then um, basically the, those are the basics that you're gonna need in setting up your studio. Those are the basics. You don't need a big, big, big studio to become a producer. But then surely, you know, when you grow, you grow and then you buy larger um, gears, yeah. And then um, the second thing that you're gonna need, you're gonna need your, your, your dough. So um, how many guys um, do you use like FL Studio? Um, Pro Tools, Logic, Cubase, Okay, cool. That's 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 nice. I know um, a lot of um, South African producers. Um, they use um, FL Studio because that is the easiest, and that I know we pirate it. We download it. We share it. I get. So, um, but then the most important thing that you need to know about the door, which is the your desk the, 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 the desktop audio workstation. That is, is very, very important. So when you have that thing, you know, um, you have your laptop or your computer, you install um, your door, and then you get, you get started with your music production. And then um, people, some people like discover them really cheap and they buy it, some people pirate it. But then I suggest that we buy the doors, guys. Because if you make a hit, you ain't gonna get paid anything. Like, you see Master KG. Master KG, we really hit the girl. And then, uh, some of, like, let me say, Spotify or YouTube, um, they, uh, before they pay him, they're gonna ask if Uber say what door did he use? And then if uh, we pirate delay, then it's gonna be a problem. Do you remember that uh, Mafigi Zolo scandal when, when they did, they made a hit in 2012? They didn't get paid their money because they pirated their door. So that's, that's the, the problems that we have. So if you don't have money, just try to save money and buy um, your workstation. And then um, 
I'm going to show you guys your basic signal flow on, on your um, workstation, on your gear. Ne? Um, starting from your computer to your um, DI boxes and um, sound cards, mixing consoles. Um, the, um, mix, a, a mixing console is not a necessity if you are starting. But then if you know um, um, your, if you have money to buy a, a mixing console, then you can buy it. But then I suggest that you get a sound cut. It has a quality. It, it, um, your sound process is too a stereo. Um, and then um, let's get started with your program source. Um, obviously, you're going to need your computer again or um, your laptop. Then your audio interfaces, which is um, your direct inbox injection, which is your DI box. Your DI box, uh, normally we use a DI box um, when you want to plug like um, your guitar, if you're a guitar or bass player, like instruments, when you, you, you patch. That's uh, the no normally you use a DI box. Né? And then um, a sound card as well we use to 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 patch um, instruments, but then normally a DI box is used when you have like um, live shows or even um, here. I think we have DI boxes here. Um, can you please show us a DI box, please? So this is um, your DI box, ne? Um, I think when we're done here, maybe we can just like pass it through so that they can see. Okay, yeah. Here. Okay. All right. Okay. Normally you have your output and your your input. So it's it's uh, it's the sound that comes in the sig your signal flow, and then the the f um, signal that comes out that goes to your mixers, maybe your um, your speakers, ne? yeah. So I'm gonna show you um, how it works. Maybe we can pass it around. This is your DI box, ne? and then it's it's an audio interface. So it it works like um, a sound card, but it, it it you're gonna need a sound card for your basic like studio um, gear. Ne? So your sound card allows your computer to read and understand the digital information that comes um, through and going to your converters. Without a sound card, you, can, you cannot do anything. Basically, your sound won't sound right. So you, you cannot hear if your sound is good or your sound is bad. So you're going to need um, your, your sound card ne? for quality purposes. And then you're gonna go to um, your mixing consoles, ne? Your mixing consoles, it's 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 like a mixer, the the normal like big mixers, ne? That we use normally, we use it for um, your let me say um, when you have a huge event, live event. Even if you don't have a live event or huge event, if if you have like a band, you record a band then you channel your, your, your band through the mixing consoles. Because you cannot use um, a sound. A sound card maybe has two or three like inputs and outputs. So your mixing consoles has like um, audio sense, aux, ne? So they send down like, um, like a signal through so that um, you can mix your... Um, your instruments. Maybe you have a band, you have a guitar, you have a, um, a bass guitar, you have drums. You know drums generally like nine or ten like channels, I get, because of um, the mics that you're going to use, I get. So, yeah. So I'm going to come back to the mixing consoles, but I'd, I'm not going to talk more about it. Someone who's going to talk about mixing will... will will elaborate more about um, your mixing console and what they what it does ne? so um, so you're gonna have um, your studio signal processors which are um, 
equalization uh, equalizers and compressors limiters ne? so i'm gonna talk about this ones as well as i'm going down and then after so this is your basic signal flow from your computer to um it's from your computer to your interface to your, to your mixer to your studio tools which is signal processors and then you're gonna have an amplifier so basically Rina, um, like a normal, like small, like studio gears. Um, sometimes we don't have like an amplifier to boost our to boost our signal, which is um, the songs that we we create again. So normally our speakers, dinali um, amplifiers, the, the studio speakers that we use. They have amplifiers, um, which they convert um, electric energy into acoustic energy. Um, you're gonna need that again your your MIDI keyboard, which is not that expensive. Your MIDI keyboard, um, it's it's a keyboard that you plug in, and then you have plug-ins in your computer though, so that you can play. Maybe your plugins like um, let me say a, a guitar or like the synthesizer. So those ones, um, the MIDI the MIDI keyboard doesn't have like um, your original like music in them. They just they they are just like in um, they are just inter uh, digital interfaces. So. Whatever that I've spoke about it, um, the, your basic signal flow. So if you can see here, you can check the ne. So you have, I can you have your mix ne, and then you're gonna have your equalizer, and you're gonna have your digital uh, digital signal display, which is which is your DSP, and then you're gonna have your amps and your speakers. So normally, as I said, Hori, we have um, amps in our speakers. But if you have money, you can buy an amp. So about the mixing console part. So we have like many three sections that are very, very, very important. And we have a patch section, which um, we patch, um, we root like um, patching as to physically, like physically, they are this thing. We we can tell it's too patient. <laughs> like here, I don't know how, okay. Like here, ne? so it's to physically, it's yeah, this, this thing, and then you, you, you plug in, you patch, that's to patch. Ne? Hang out here, So, yeah, it's, it's to root signal so that you can have um, a, an oncoming signal flow from whatever that you plug from. Ne? And then we have a master section. Your master section is this section. Ne? So um, this section, obviously, you have um, a levels, a level which indicates in LED, an LED indicator. Agar. So you, you guys know Lizzy Robot, the most of you la drive. Agar. So... Ali drive. Marlizi robot again. Ogasi robot daily read the wajambas kuntiro to like go away. So that what happens when you guys passed this because the engineers. When you guys are in the festivals. So you must be careful. You must be careful with your mixes when you mix, ne? Even if when you mix in studio, because you're going to pass your speakers. Imagine if you bought a Yamaha speakers, got 16,000, and then then we say, then your speakers are damaged. So, you, very, very important the level of your mixing console must not go through. You know, robot, man, guys. And then you have your channel section. Um, your channel section is the uh, um, signal input, um, the input where 
you have like different sources come where they come from. Ne? Um, like your your sources like um instruments, obviously. You plug in instruments through um channels. Channel one, you plug um a guitar, channel two, you plug your bass, channel three, you plug um or synthesizers. Some of the guys honestly, maybe let me say like a drum. When you 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 produce uh, when when you busy all the prom own production with um, maybe drum sections, some um, they group the drum, ne? and then they group the drum to a one bus, and then they s channel it to one section. So if you know how to mix a group a section, then osta. So Chima is gonna talk about the mixing part. So yeah. Um, so from the channel section, we have um, pre and post. Ne? So Cody faders. Obviously, go channel section. We have those things that those things that young Cody mudiko tasi, which is your levels. I get. So we have a pre and we have a post. So um, your pre is before the fader, which we use before, which we use for monitoring. Let me say, um, you see that guy, the, the engineer, ne? Um, maybe my, um, my, my, my mic is, is up, ne? And then, yeah, now, oh, again, say the headphones, I get. So say, channel yeah, hi, maybe a, a, a sound, ne? It's on. It's on pre, cause he's he's monitoring, he's monitoring. I get. He's he's using his headphones, and then after it's it's post, which we used for effects. Then you put the fader up, and then you turn on the effects. I get. Do you guys understand me? I <laughs> don't understand. Okay. So um, I think Chima is gonna talk about more with the the mixing um, console part because it's part of mixing. So um, your signal processes, which are your studio your studio studio tools, equalizers, limiters, um, compressors, you name them. Get the get the so those ones, Chima will talk about it as well, but I just want to elaborate. If, if you have, if you want to buy them physically, Osadinya gets the plugins, then you can buy them. You can buy them and you patch them through your mixer. Then you, you use them. Ibile, Dioba, so much more easier for you to mix if, if you know how to mix. And then um, another thing about um, the the studio, let me say um, you have like a smaller nyana room or your bedroom. Most of us, we produce in our bedrooms. It's not a scene, guys. Most people made money from their bedrooms. So don't let this big studio guys fool you. But then try not to compromise your mixes. Just give Chaima your mixes. And then he must he, he might mix it for you guys, ne? You can say, "Ubata kohe no honali one bedroom and honali festereling." There's a window. There's a big window. You're not gonna be able to mix because sound is bouncing. Sound is bouncing. You're gonna not like when all the hotel you mix so can the whole jala modi speaking. Then it's something else. So your levels are not intact, ne? Okay, so um, compressors and um, limiters and um, other effects like vocoders are part of like dynamic processes. Uh, I think I'll give you guys, after the session, I'll give you guys um, books that you can read and then try to um, take something from there and then put it in, 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 in action. And then so that you can hear like some some things are different. And then um, speaking about studio monitors, ne? studio monitors are not your normal like PA speakers. They are totally different. Ne? 
We have a bi-amp speakers, which we have two amplifiers. And then we have tri-amp speakers, which we have three amplifiers. Né? We normally use two amplifiers né? for our um, bi-amp because we have a high and a low. High, which um, um, we don't have a mid. Né? We only have high and low. So um, normally, they, where they have a mid on your um, subwoofers, because your subwoofers in a, a, a lot of lows, low, um, what do you call this? In a low, it, 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 like class, it's a pace, it's, it's boo, 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 boo. and then Rina, Rinaga, Rabatutra, a high Rabatutra, Agar, and a little bit of low, Agar. So, um, in our speakers, when you use um, what we use in studios, we you must buy um, a bio amp speaker name, and then uh, normally um, the moni monitors are very very essential because if you use let me say if you use your your normal like PA speakers, I don't know how you are gonna mix them. It's it's gonna be a problem, but then try to. Not not to compromise your craft using the lot DJ you cannot do that. Oh where it sound by you're gonna blow that thing. Cause you know Bali where it sounds fruity loops le rather volume. Guys, your volumes go fruity. Cause you guys don't mix your projects. And the volume it's very, very high. Because why 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 high volume? It's high because of you don't use um the speakers they they long horrid but like you must use essential speakers, which are your studio monitors. Even if you don't have like a four thousand, five thousand to buy them, studio monitors, just buy like um um, your normal like just to hear be la horoite okay why you do head the illa so then if lori we can ta equalizer why intensify I get so I get a whole can equalizer you intensify you you color you color whatever imagine guys um playing a song here it's not colored it's 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 like white it's not even white it's clear so you I got a wagon a crage. I'm gonna go creating near Kalara. You color and then you make your borders nicely. It's it it's it, and then you hear everything well. Yeah, more color level. That's what you do when when you go to studio and and do your work. I get so um so I'm not gonna um, talk about your your triumphs, ne? Because this is not your session. Gotta try amps. So you need to buy your 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 buy amps, and then I'm gonna give you a few point pointers after the session, and then books that you can reference to. Um, we have I have free books. Uh, anyone uh, anyone Tanghori Kimufe like um, I have um, PDF um, books that I used in varsity. So if anyone wants um, um, mixing books or whatever books. That has to do with the studio. Let me know um, on my email. Let me give you guys my email, and then just um, send me something there, and then I'll I'll try to to send you the the PDF files. It's m i z dinero at gmail .com. Okay, let me type it there, ne? so that everyone can see. Um. Oh, what's happening?
So, um, did everyone get it? So, um, speaking of uh, the speakers again, so obviously we have um, our, um, um, it's, it's two, I get, it's, it's um, by amp, I get. So we have a built-in, um, a built-in amp inside our speaker, I get. So we have an active crossover. We have an active crossover so that the speakers are not discussed, yeah. But then be careful with your volumes. Again, I'm saying, if we know you put a run crossover, I'm not speaking here how we say volume 100. So, um, I get it. So, obviously, we have a high, a higher frequency, which is our high, our highs, our highs, um, Obviously, we have our low frequency, with, which is our lows, our bass, our kicks, and then our high giddy heads, giddy crash, those are our highs, I get. So um, I'm not going to talk about those things, Chaima, and somebody else will talk about that. So I think I have um, talked about everything we need in studio. At, uh, yeah, thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Um, uh, is there anyone who has questions, especially with regards to studio gear? Uh, in terms of recording, right, mm -hmm. um, how can you get better sound? For example, if you just have a condenser and a pop filter, yeah. what else do you need to just like um, not maybe record the sounds outside your area or anything or to just to get better quality sound obviously obviously your bike as well it has an effect on 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 your vocals on everything that you that you record your mic i get why your, your mics um generally a certain range if you buy a cheaper mic obviously your voice is going to be cheap okay so what can you do to um maybe you say you're on a budget yeah Right. What can you do to enhance that recording? Obviously, then? you need a mixer. Someone who's good in mixing. Okay. Someone who's good in mixing. His, he, even if your, your mic is cheaper, someone who's good in mixing. And then if you record um, your vocals and your vocals that it doesn't have like air or like dirt, they just clean and clear, then you're good to go. Someone who's good in mixing will mix your voice. It will sound like gold. Thank you. Um, uh, if I could just add on that as well, Ned. like um, another thing is that uh, if if you are in an area like a loud area um, and you don't really have soundproof, sound you know, yeah. um, you you might not be able to get rid of those noises. So the the best thing to do, I think, maybe record late at night when you know there isn't a lot of activity, you know, in around where you stay that might help a bit with the, the bleed, you know, that, um, yeah. Um, what can you use to soundproof um, your studio then? Obviously, at a you budget. Need, <laughs> at the budget. Obviously, you're going to need soundproof again. So I'm not sure it's soundproof in a budget. Okay. But then you can start little by little. You can start little by little. But then it depends, again, if you have a window. A window is a problem. Cool. Yeah, I think also like with regards to anything when you don't have uh, enough budget, you know, certain things might be limited with respect to what you can do and what you can't do. Um, like an example that I could make where I stay, my room that I work in, you know, it's a, so I stay in the second floor. So there's a room, there's a, a floor above me, there's a floor below me. So the roof is um, it's a uh, concrete, you know. Yeah. So I I had to get somebody to install cushions just on the roof, you know, to kind of um, 
minimize reflections, you know. But if you don't really have budget, you know, people talk about getting a lot of thick curtains, thick blankets, you know, and sometimes mattresses around just to try and minimize, you know, the reflections. But that's as far as you can go. <laughs> yeah. Do you have any other questions relating to studio? You, uh, ma'am, you find that uh, on your monitors, like uh, your monitors, they can cover a uh, different uh, ranges of frequencies. Some other monitors, they have, uh, they can cover mostly the high frequencies. Other monitors, they can cover both, but you find that they are stronger on low end. Mm. So, is it advisable to have a maybe a set of the monitors or you should have just one that will cover all the frequencies? It depends. If if you have money, budget to buy other pairs of monitors, but then some of the monitors at the back, you can twitch them until you, you, ha you, you get to a certain point that you, you hear that this is the right frequency that I want. I don't know, LSG. Yeah, yeah, I can add. Uh, yeah, she's right. Some monitors have got like um, you can adjust whether you can reduce the base if they are like very bassy monitors. Sometimes they're not necessarily bassy. Sometimes you're in a small room, um, and when you have large monitors in a small room, you know you will get a lot of bass. Then some have that um, adjustment that you can have at the back. But with regards to having two different types of monitors. Like I've seen people do that, you know, a, a lot of studios, professional studios will have more than, more than, a, you know, a pair, just to, to have also a referencing in a, to listen to your music in a different speaker. How will it sound if it's sounding, if you're playing it in a different speaker, you know? I think it's more of a referencing thing, mm -hmm. but it's not a necessity, especially in the beginning, you know? I still use one pair of speakers with my productions. Um, can I add on that? And it depends on your room. How, how big is your room? You cannot just buy like small, like five inch or 10 inch speakers in this big room and expect uh, your mixes to be great. No. If you, you buy like small speakers, just get a smaller room so that you, like I get it, sound bounces. So, when sound bounce, then if you can hear that, uh, oh, my mix is well, my mix is not, so you're gonna have a problem. So try to buy speakers according to the size of your room. Because when you buy big speakers in a smaller room, then you're just gonna hear bass, just like LSG just said. So try to 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 like your your room might have uh, an effect on your mix. Cool. Uh, do we oh, got one more? Uh, regarding the I don't know door or it's door door or door is it a software or yeah. also it's a software you install it? Yeah, it's, it's a software. Or is it software? Yeah. Okay. It's so, a software. So what what does it do? Uh, software, obviously, it's a musical um, pr production in um, um, software. Oh. Like, um, let me say FL Studio. You produce there, some mix there, some master there. And then we have a w um, this thing we call Wave. You, some, um, they chop other people's songs there. <laughs> and there, some master there. And then you have Pro Tools. Some mix there, you know. So we have different types of doors. Oh, okay, thanks. Yeah, doors is just a, a smart a way of saying of saying a software, yeah, software you yes. know, yeah, a music software. Sure. Uh, can I also ask about Ama um, uh, headphones? Are uh, headphones essential for e production? And what type of headphones do we need okay. to? Yeah, you can Bye. use headphones. Mm -hmm. You can use headphones. But then Mina headphones, I know 
Um, I started using, uh, I started my production 2010 using headphones. I made most of my songs using headphones. But then the thing is, what types of head headphones? Could you recommend? Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I, c I can recommend uh, like Beats. Beats are, are for obviously studio, uh, those are studio headphones. There are different types of headphones that you can use. You can Google them for studio. But then don't use your Pioneer DJ headphones. Because, I mean, that is for DJ. Don't use your um, Nokia headphones. <laughs> They're going to tell you a lie. They're going to lie on you. My other, like my first project, I was so excited and happy. I'm like, oh, I'm a producer. I'm going to Chima Studio. Yo, when I got there, I shame. It was a disaster. You understand? So you try to Google them. But then if, if like, it depends on, uh, and uh, like, your ears. Our ears differ, guys. We have different types of um, the frequencies as well. Sometimes they kill our ears, eardrums. My eardrums are, at like, close to be dead because of I was using, like, normal headphones to, to produce. Because I didn't have um, studio monitors. And I couldn't just sit and say, I don't have studio monitors. I can't do anything. So you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn. But then don't, don't kill your ears. Thank you, thank you. Hi, uh, I just want to find out in terms of uh, studio monitors, uh, what brand do you guys recommend? Like, what is the best? Because I've seen people using M Audios, some use Yamaha. Uh, mm -hmm. Yamaya or whatever, like what do you recommend? What's best for you in terms of production yeah. and mixing the sound and all that? I think it depends on you. The speakers are, very, are different. They're very, very much different. So it depends um, on your budget as well. Some, they differ. In M Audios are cheap. Um, you have your Mindkey Bananas are cheap as well, Kanda cheap. Then you have your Yamahas and then you start paying like the ten thousands now, and then you have your um, care case, and then you start paying your thirty thousands. But then they differ in sizes as well. Yeah, and, and I think we, uh, more it's a budget thing. You know, like my choice of monitors is really purely on budget, um, and the more you can pay, usually the the, the better. But obviously, it depends on, on on your own budget, you know. Like, and also, when buying any any equipment, especially studio equipment, monitors, stuff like that, headphones, I would recommend that you go to the shop, you know, and and listen to different songs, especially songs that you are used to on those headphones. You know, listen on different headphones, listen on different speakers, just to see to hear how how different they sound. Because I would find for example, KRKs, that's what I used to do when I started, uh, what I used when I started. And they are very bass heavy for me. Then I moved on to Adams, um, which are not so bass heavy, but a slightly higher priced monitor. So it just depends on your budget and the sound you know, that, you, that you're looking for. But I would recommend you go into the store and instead of just buying online um, and you might get something that doesn't really work for you or for your room. Okay, uh, you find that on some studios there's a hardware mixer. So my question is that is that a, a necessary? Because when you check on your software, they they are mixing channels there. Um, like I, I explained before, when coming to mixing consoles, are you talking about a mixer? That one. Yeah, that one. Let me say um, you're using um, uh, a band. A band, you need that one. You cannot record using um, um, your your like your FL uh, mixer or your Pro Tools mixer. You need that mixer so that you patch each and every instrument so that you can get signal. Because if you can patch an instrument through the mixer to the interface to your computer, then there's no signal. You cannot do anything. There's no sound. There's no recording. There's nothing. You're just going to get a line. 
Yeah. Ask the Lord on the sound, sound card yeah. for th that recording. Yeah, you can record with the sound card. You can record your guitar. You can you record your bass guitar. You can even record your, your key, your keyboards. But then, if you have, like, a, you, you can't just tell me, Hori, you're going to record a band, a sound card. So you're going to record a head, how I want. Yeah, uh, it depends what you want to record. Yeah, it depends. Uh, yeah. If you're recording 10 people at the same time, obviously you need, you need something that gives you 10 inputs, you know. Okay. Yeah. Unless your sound card has got multiple inputs, then you can use that to record. But it's not a necessity to have a, a mixing yeah. console. Uh, and also you do get uh, bigger sound cards that's yeah. more in, that's got more inputs and stuff like that, but also it goes with the budget as well. Yeah. So, I mean, I think she's probably just referring to the budget uh, small uh, sound cards. Yeah. Yep, so. uh, we've got one or oh, two more there. Um, so, I just want to add on to the point of headphones for production. Uh, the word you guys looking for is flat response, you know, because those ones are not bass heavy or mm. high on the high frequencies also, and even the mid range is fine. So those are what I use personally, uh, Sennheisers. Mm. So they usually use them to, in, in film production, like to record the sound that's coming from the people on set so they've been working pretty fine for me and i think they're close backs so it means i can't hear what's going on outside when i have them on and there's also open back i use the berenjas and they also have a similar sound but you get disturbance from outside noise so your mixing you know can benefit a lot from closed back headphones more than open back yeah like i've said it depends with our ears our ears are, are not the same so um i cannot personally because i have damaged my ears i cannot use any any even beats i try i have beats i have used beats i tried to mix um, my last project with the beats i couldn't find anything there and then i had to just go to chime and say bro can you please mix for me because I, like it depends on our ears. You can use your Behringers and then find that you are good at mixing with them. So it depends. Cool. Um, we are about to get into it, the next session, but let's get um, two more questions. One there and one. Um, I wanted to know with regards to mixing mono versus stereo. I have read somewhere that some people prefer mixing from literally one monitor and uh, trying to clean up those sounds there and then before moving to a stereo sound space. So um, do you also apply that or is it a, a producer preference thing? I think it's a preference. Yeah, it's a preference. Yeah, it depends. Yeah, just, just like I've said, our ears are not the same. Yeah, but, uh, like the way, only time I, I would use that technique is to check if I don't have any phasing. You know, then I would literally put uh, a mono switch on on my mixer um, to check if I, if I don't have any phasing. But that is, I understand the technique. It's mainly about okay, I wanna get all my levels correct in this one one sound before I start panning. You know, um, but for me, uh, it doesn't really. I pan immediately during while I'm producing before mixing. I'm already panning my stuff. You know, yeah. Um, Jesse, we've got one more here, and then we move to the session with Sampra. Uh, Hola. So I have this other bearinger that I just bought recently. Uh, it's a sound card, and then also a C1 bearinger microphone, uh, the 48 volt one. So. When I record, I get this buzz noise in the background, even when I have everything switched off that I think maybe it might be the cause of the interference, or like amplifiers, TVs, PC, whatever. And then I still get that buzz noise. The sound card connects to the PC uh, using the USB port. So I want to get rid of that buzz noise. How can I do that? You know, I, I, I had that problem as well. It might be your, your cords. 
It might be your coats. You, you try to change your coats, or it might be your, your PC. Yeah, it might be your PC or your um, your PC might have um, an interference on yourself. It might have noise. Okay. Or cool. your coats. Yeah. Just, try, just try to change yeah. like your coats. Right, cool. Buy like a more like not expensive coats, but then because yeah. they long hurry, um, they are not cheaper, but yeah. then in the middle. Yeah, I, I have yeah. put new coats, but then I didn't change the piece, so I'm going to try a different laptop and see if I still yeah. get the bus. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It or the last thing might be that your sound card is not, it's messed up. The inputs, yeah. the actual inputs on your sound card. I will try that. Yeah. Cool. Uh, let's give it up for Misty. Oh, thank, you. thank you, guys. Thanks.